Thank you for checking out crypto.chartguys.com, the source for technical analysis in the cryptocurrency world. We are proud to announce our own crypto alert system designed to give you the most critical technical trading information possible no matter where you are. Keep your eyes on the market with mobile or email alerts for MACD crosses, RSI levels, and even inside bar alerts for dozens of coins across multiple exchanges. New features and proprietary chart guys indicators are already in development. Our alert system is very easy to customize and utilize, so don't hesitate to sign up for the most effective crypto trading tool on the market at crypto.chartguys.com. Hey everybody, a little bit of a somber mood this video. If you caught the video yesterday, you know at this point, uh, I've been carrying a deep dark secret and there's no holding on to it anymore. It's, it's out in the open and all the hate mail is warranted and, and this is probably gonna be my last video, but um, I don't have experience with European coffee culture nor the, the China that it's served in. And this is something that I've, I've kept uh, hidden under wraps for the last few years and uh, I, I just can't do it anymore. So I'm, I'm really sorry that I let you all down and the espresso cups are really small. And I now know that. I just hope you can forgive me. So let's look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin on the weekly time frame. We're going to start doing things from a more of a swing trading perspective. And then we'll zoom in. So I'm going to start these videos from now on. I'm not going to do it every day because, again, if you're looking at the long-term perspective from a swing trader every single day, I'm just going to be repeating myself over and over, especially with the weekly chart. So we'll do the daily every day from a, a day trader or from a swing trader's perspective. But as of right now, as we know, we are watching this weekly equilibrium pattern continue to tighten up. And the question everybody wants to know is, is this our weekly lower high forming? And the answer is, I don't know. But we're going to know a little bit more every single day. And losing the daily higher low pattern will instantly shift the odds more significantly that the weekly lower high is set and that we need to consolidate and form a higher low. Ideal scenario for the bulls would be to hold 8,000 support for a higher low in order to be looking for continuation. By the way, I was just kidding in the beginning. I know I'm going to get messages from people who didn't get that. That was a joke. So equilibrium, if we consolidate, ideal scenario, hold 8,000 for the higher low and then see the bull break over whatever our top ends up being, if this ends up being our top. So the daily time frame right now is pulling back. And like we said in the video live yesterday, we're going to anticipate forming a higher low. And that's the mindset that we need to be in. So if I'm going into today's trading day and I'm saying, I'm looking for a daily higher low to form because for all of these names, and we'll look at all three of them right now real quick, but the what would have been needed to break the daily higher lows would have been an all out huge dump. And we even saw a huge dump in, in Ethereum, but it wasn't enough to get even close to breaking the daily higher low pattern. You can see Litecoin nowhere close. We have some nice long lower wicks of bulls buying the dip. I am confident that our daily higher lows are being set right now. And the question is going to be how much follow through can the bulls get from here? So we'll look at the, the signals of what indicated that the bottom was forming right now. First off, Ethereum, there's no SEC nothing about securities. That was all uh, just made up. BS. I don't think it was really FUD because it's not like it was anything that had a definitive bearish tone to it. I personally was view viewing it as a non-event. Turns out it is literally a non-event. And that just is a, a nice reminder for all of us that, you know, things get passed around and, and I'm guilty of it too, just, you know, reporting on that and saying this is upcoming because everybody else was and because it, it was reported in articles. But it's just, we have to be careful as we know in the the day and age of social media and fake news and all this, uh, it's definitely, as we can see, a real thing. So are our daily higher lows in, in my opinion, yes. And like I said, and again, in the video live from yesterday, in order to change this trend, it's not gonna happen with a dump of higher lows. It's gonna set another higher low, which I do believe we are forming. Then we're gonna have to set a lower high, unable to break to a higher high, and then a lower low. That will be the kind of bearish reversal head and shoulders pattern. I drew that as well. So again, check out the live video yesterday and there's a bunch of altcoins in there, but if you're only interested in the big three, I uh, should get the, the full rundown in the first 10 minutes of that video. And it's playing out exactly as I anticipate it to at this point. We'll see if we get this lower high, but essentially I'm gonna be looking for a daily tightening pattern to form over this week, the next, let's say two, three days. So if the bulls get some follow through, we will be looking up 
at a lower high around 9,700 or so. But first things first, let's go and say, see what was the indication that our bottom was found. And sometimes a bear break and a lack of bear follow through is a bull signal and vice versa, a bull break and a lack of bull volume and continuation is a bear signal. So here we had a low of a pullback on Bitcoin and let's look at it on the hourly time frame. So we knew last night we were dumping pretty significantly. We set a bear flag. We dropped down to a lower low. Here's another bear flag and another lower low. The difference between this time is the bull volume behind the bounce. So we had a bear break. We saw a little bit of follow through, not significant. Some stops triggered. Look at the bull volume in response. When you see this kind of bull volume 10 minutes after a bear break occurs, that is a big signal. As soon as I saw that volume on the 15 minute time frame, I said, okay, that might be our daily higher low forming and was looking for, this is the kind of move that actually ran away from me where I don't have a position right now and I wanted one, but it wasn't something I was going to chase. So we had the big bull volume. I said, all right, I'm looking for that to be our low of the day. And I'm looking for a lower high on this bounce and then a higher low and a higher high to confirm the 15 minute trend change. We never got that 15 minute consolidation and it ran away without me. And a lot of other people are on the sideline as well, waiting for this kind of scenario and saying, you know, when do I get in? I don't want to chase here. And I said in the chat room, the anti FOMO is to look at the four hour chart. And I look at this chart and I have no FOMO. And that's because we are doing nothing to change this trend. We have a lower high and lower low four hour trend. We're going to form a lower high on this bounce. In order to change this four hour trend and for us to be very confident that our daily higher low is now established is we need a lower high on this four hour move. Anything under 9,600. I need to get that exact level. These lines always block my numbers. 9,633. Anything under that level is a lower high. So we will look to see a lower high, a higher low, and then a higher high to change the four hour trend to give us a bull MACD cross potentially, and to give us that daily higher low very confidently. I'm somewhat confident of that daily higher low, but I will be a lot more confident. I'll probably double my confidence if we get a higher low and a higher high on the four hour time frame. So again, as I saw this price running away without me on the 15 minute time frame, all I had to do was look at the four hour chart and say, Nothing is going to change on this four hour time frame. It is an oversold bounce on the hourly RSI. I was waiting for the trade to come to me. I wanted a little bit more weakness on that bear break and another leg down. I was starting to place my bids when the bounce and that bull volume showed up. So again, I didn't get anything, but I've had a really good past week trading and I'm not gonna chase anything. I'm gonna patiently wait for this four hour time frame to tighten up now. So yes, I missed some profit from the bounce that we saw today, but I'm not gonna beat myself up over that. I'm gonna get the next trade. And that'll be good. I still have as many dollars as yesterday. Haven't lost a thing. So watching to see is our lower high forming on the four hour time frame, And what's going to be an indication that our four hour lower high is formed. The first signal will be a loss of the 15 minute higher lows. The last 15 minute higher low, I'm looking at 9356. If we break 9,356, again, which is not likely on this pullback, we're likely to form a higher low. We'll need a lower high and a lower low to change the trend. But if we lose the 15 minute higher low, we then go to the hourly and we look to see where our hourly supports are. And again, we haven't established a clear hourly higher low at this point. So I am watching close to see, do we lose the 15 minute time frame of higher lows? And do we see four hour consolidation into this evening, which is what I'm anticipating to happen. And I'm going to patiently wait for a higher low on the four hour time frame. Maybe we'll try to enter on that higher low and then we'll see if we can get that higher high for continuation. So that's where we stand right now. If you are in a trade, you're absolutely very comfortable and you can wait however long you want. You could stop out if the 15 minute higher lows are lost. You could stop out at break even if you wanted to, but the bulls are seeing a strong enough bounce. The magnitude of this bounce is strong enough. And again, going back to the hourly, bunch of green in a row, breaking resistance, strong enough that we are anticipating a higher low and a higher high is more likely than not from this current scenario. ETH. A lot going on with ETH again, potentially because of those rumors as a, a reason, but we got to look at ETH on Bitfinex because we had a lot of volume and some wild action that we did not see on Coinbase. And this is just last night. Not sure where my volume went. Oh, there we go. I'm on the shorts. ETH USD Bitfinex. So the volume in that one hour time span, you can see it standing out here. 
I've got 40,000 on Bitfinex. And you just zoom out and say, okay, that's the highest hourly volume that we've seen. And this is going back to March. So well over six weeks, nothing even compares to this hourly volume. So what happened there? And the answer is a lot of stops triggered and a ton of loading went on in my opinion. So in my opinion, it was absolutely intentional, you know, whether people were using the SEC potential as some FUD to scare some stop loss orders and some selling, I can't say, but it does look like we had a bunch of bear volume trigger some stops. And then we hit the bottom and look at the volume climaxes at the lows and that double bottom. Again, this is a lot. It looks like a red candlestick with a lot of bear volume there, but that's a lot of bull loading as well on these lower wicks. So in my opinion, stop losses were triggered. We had a clear double bottom and then a, a huge bounce, huge relatively to what we've seen, just the magnitude of the bounce, how quickly it happened. This hourly time frame for Ethereum, we went from 685 up to 758. So that is a 70 plus bounce. That's a 10% bounce in six hours. We don't see those kind of moves in cryptocurrency often anymore haven't recently unless we get you know oversold climax dumps which this was to a degree hourly oversold volume climax significant bounce going on and that's actually i need to double check i don't have these bitfinex alerts but i know that the criteria that's an hourly oversold climax alert that would have gone out there but either way it's a significant double bottom change of the lower highs and i do believe that there was loading going on anticipating the daily higher low to form here and there's a lot of volume there a lot of bear volume a lot of bull volume mixed in so that did not happen on Coinbase. Definitely volume, but you look at the hourly chart and we zoom out and we say, okay, that doesn't stand out in any way, shape, or form. So notable difference in exchanges, whether it's you know a couple whales on one exchange trying to trigger stop losses and load, it's all speculation. I don't know the answer. And it doesn't really matter in the long run. We're seeing the price action the same on all these exchanges. We're just, just follow the charts. Again, if you try and look and speculate too much into these little things, it can get really confusing and can detract you from the, the concrete and the concrete are the price levels and that does not change we're all looking at the same thing speculation is is wild and can be can be right we can be wrong we'll never know it's a waste of time in my opinion it's nice to to think on and, and speculate and you know uh exchange information with other people and, and try and figure it out to a certain degree but again you don't want to dwell on it and let that detract from just the regular technical price levels that we always play. So where we're looking for Ethereum on the daily time frame. Same scenario as Bitcoin. We anticipated a daily higher low to form. In order for this trend to change, we're going to have to form a lower high with an inability to break 829 and then form a lower low breaking this low of 695. That's going to be the trend change if it happens. If it doesn't, we're just going to look for continuation and for the bulls to stay in control. So where we stand in this moment, daily uptrends are in full control. Bulls are in full control, and that's not changing anytime soon. If that changes, like I said, probably two to three days to see that lower high and lower low on the daily time frame play out. So this was another one where I was looking for an ETH entry and want to make sure I'm on Coinbase now. But I was looking for an ETH entry, and I was looking for an equilibrium to play out here. We have our low of the dump, the high of the bounce, a higher low, and we went straight to a higher high. The correlation to Bitcoin was a bit of a reason for that. With the strength that Bitcoin saw on its bounce as well, we went $300 on Bitcoin. So we went significantly here on Ethereum. And again, it was one that ran away from me. None of my bids filled. I wasn't going to market, market buy, order, and chase. If we lose the 15-minute higher low pattern, which is still intact, that'll be signal number one that, again, anti-FOMO. Look at the four-hour chart. Anything under 790 is just a lower high. We are not going to break the four-hour trend on this bounce. So we're going to set a lower high on this four hour time frame. We're going to pull back and form a higher low. And then it's anybody's guess if we can break bullish or not. The odds favor a bull break in my opinion, but we have to see how much we pull back, where that new support is established and things of that nature. So overall, pretty much everything I just said for Bitcoin does apply for Ethereum. But look at this hourly chart, six green hours in a row. It's very easy to pass that up knowing we need to consolidate and form a higher low. So yeah, you know, an inside bar bull break at, at 747 did lead to $10 and that was a day trade opportunity. But in terms of risk to reward on buying before any hourly consolidation, when the chart looks like this, risk out favors reward. So again, anti-FOMO, look at the four hour chart. Note that nothing is changing this trend of lower highs and lower lows. And note that we will have to form a higher low and then break the lower highs in order for that to occur. Litecoin, 
same thing. We were anticipating the daily higher low because of how much space we had in order to form that before breaking the last daily higher low. And the same thing in terms of the bounce. We need an hourly consolidation and higher low to form. This bounce has been six green hours in a row. It's very strong for the bulls, but the four-hour anti-FOMO medicine, lower high, anything under 171.88 is a lower high. And we're nowhere near breaking that resistance. If we lose the 15-minute higher low pattern, which is still intact for the bulls, we will be looking for the four-hour consolidation to begin. So that's where we stand as we head into tonight. Could the bulls still see continuation and head to higher highs? Absolutely. We don't have to set our four-hour lower high right now. But again, the odds that we see a move from this point to break the four-hour lower highs from here without seeing consolidation is not likely. It's just not a likely scenario. I'd, I'd give it, you know, 85% chance we will consolidate and have to form a four-hour higher low. So that is where we stand. Again, just to recap on Bitcoin this morning, what were... What was going through my head that had me anticipating a daily higher low? First off was yesterday's analysis fresh in my head. Watch for a daily higher low to form because we have a lot of space before the last daily higher low and we don't have enough bear volume or FUD or any kind of dump to lose the daily higher low pattern from these levels. So I went into today with that mindset. Look for the daily higher low. Then on the bear break of Bitcoin on the five minute time frame with the volume flush, the bull volume was very significant buying that dip. And then we saw follow through. So as soon as I saw that bull volume on the bear break, I said, all right, that shifts my odds. I now have a slightly more increased belief that our that the percentages of our daily higher low forming have happened. Then when we broke the 15 minute lower high pattern here, my odds shifted again, even more so. Daily higher low is likely established. Then when we broke the hourly lower highs, same thing. Odds shifted again and said, all right, now I'm even more sure that our daily higher low is forming. So it's it's this timeline of events where the more data and the more information I get, the more my percentage on what I anticipate is most likely to happen shifts. And that's where we stand into tonight. I will likely try and scale into some positions. I'd love to see five minute RSI oversold. If we could dump here enough to get five minute RSI oversold, and maybe even some 15 minute low RSI and a four hour higher low all lining up, that would be a pretty decent entry. That's something I'm gonna be keeping an eye out for. Bulls do not have full control of this four hour time frame until they give us a higher low and a higher high. And that will make us extremely confident that our daily higher low is formed and we'll be making our way back up, in my opinion, to form a daily lower high and a continued tightening daily range into the end of this week. So I appreciate you watching. That's where I stand in terms of my analysis. I hope you all continue to do good things. I'm not going to talk about coffee cups ever again. And let's see. Accountability. So as a trader, I've been trading at this point eight years, about eight years, a little more, and started the chart guys three years ago. So I had five years with no accountability except for myself. So it's very easy to deceive yourself. And what I mean by that is to be sloppy as a trader and to, to make exceptions and say, oh, well, I don't care if I, I risk $500 on this trade, even if it's not, you know, a good risk to reward. And if you lose, then, you know, you're the only one that knows about it and you move on to the next trade and you can keep making bad decisions that way. Accountability, as soon as I started the chart guys and my trades were public and I was posting when I was buying and enter or, and selling these things, I all of a sudden very quickly tightened up my game plan and stuck to my stop levels and followed all of my rules. And it's very easy to break your rules, your rule of thumb and your game plan if it's only you watching. And if you have other people watching, whether it's friends, people you're teaching, even just writing it on paper adds a certain degree more of accountability rather than just numbers in your head and game plans in your head. If you have to see it on paper and, and recognize to yourself, I'm breaking the game plan that I just wrote down, that that means something and that will hopefully be more of a deterrent. But when you got a whole bunch of people watching, I became twice the trader that I was before the chart guys only due to accountability. And also of course, due to interacting with members and all the knowledge that they brought to the table, I'm still learning every single day. And uh, accountability is definitely something that shouldn't be overlooked. And if you have, you know, the, the audacity, the, the balls to put yourself out there, to find another word for balls and just can't but put yourself out there and that will lead to again you following your game plan 
being more strict and uh, hopefully seeing more trades profitable. And that was my experience. I had smaller losers, I had bigger winners, and accountability is to thank for that. So I appreciate you watching. We'll be back tomorrow to see if we get that four hour lower high and tightening pattern. I assume that's what we're gonna wake up to tomorrow morning. Obviously news and volume can change that at any point, but that is the most likely scenario in my opinion. I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you soon.